Um, a big, a big project for us recently is a partnership we've established with Facebook. Um, first on the marketing science side, which is analyzing the actual delivery of large television campaigns and large campaigns delivered on Facebook, where we can match the delivery of those campaigns at the, at the person and household level, and for the very first time truly understand the incremental reach or the incremental frequency of the ads that are being delivered by these large advertisers on both platforms. I mean, cross channels talked about a lot, but actually getting all the way into the weeds and matching those together is hard. And obviously, you can now start setting up a lot of you know, much better understanding of how to use the two together. Um, we'll also be looking at linking that to outcome-based information, like how it actually caused sales. Um, there's a lot of foundational research that's been done in the marketplace about how each channel that a marketer uses tends to enhance the previous channel, what's the halo effect typically, and, um, or what's the priming effect of being first on Facebook maybe and then on TV, and starting to understand that could fundamentally change the way marketers use both television and social media. Yeah, so one of, the, one of the developments that's been happening in television and we've been very involved with at Simul Media is, is actually truly linking what people view on TV with what they buy in the stores. And that's possible now because we have massive amounts of television viewing set-top box data available that can be matched in the United States at the name and address level with data from banks and credit cards or retailers' point of sale systems where we're not talking about panels of hundreds or thousands of people. We're actually talking about single source panels of tens of millions of people. And so now finally you can understand if someone saw an ad for Wendy's or Burger King, did it change how that household bought burgers at McDonald's, Bur Wendy's, or Burger King, um, or Arby's that week? And that's been a whole, the holy grail for television. It's only ever been done in aggregated ways. Now you can actually link it to the individual household and you can even understand what were the differences in response. I mean, were these people that switched brands because of this ad? Were these people that increased consumption that were already loyal? Um, those are a lot of the kinds of conversations that, were, that are happening here at ICOM about how do you introduce segmentation and not just see things in aggregate levels. And so, you know, it's really going to change the way television is being done. It's truly bringing a digital approach to TV advertising. So the one challenge is that you can talk about bringing a digital approach to television advertising, but there's a lot of barriers to it actually happening on the ground. And one of them is in the United States, for example, the television advertising marketplace is a $75 billion marketplace that has been coming together and developing and hardening and maturing for 50 to 60 years. Um, you might say it's a bit sclerotic in a lot of ways. Um, uh, unlike, though, industries like newspapers that had a significant rise and then fall, television doesn't have a user problem in the United States. Television viewership today is within a percentage or point or two of the, the all-time highest amounts of TV viewing. And so that means that if you work in the TV industry, if you sell TV advertising, if you buy TV advertising, if you measure TV advertising, before you can innovate, you have to protect. You've got to protect the $75 billion of business before you can think about the next step. And, and that, that means that when the major incumbents aren't as incented, it's, things take time. So one of the things that is going to be required before we see real significant changes in the way television advertising is bought and sold and measured um, will be a change in, in, in people. And, and quite frankly, the, the kinds of skill sets that, that helped people become successful on television over the last 20 or 30 years, which are um, um, strong negotiating skills over scarce commodities that were managed in distribution over government monopoly franchises, give rise to different kinds of people with different skills than what happens when marketplaces become more open, when data and empiricism drive decisions more, when it's about interpreting insights. And I think we're seeing this everywhere from um, the, the chief marketing officer and the marketing organizations where we're seeing more empiricists, more people with data and science background. Um, in the television world, we're now seeing the rise of people who 
spent significant parts of their career in the digital advertising world. I'm seeing a number of them here at ICOM. In the measurement side, we're seeing the large measurement companies like Nielsen buying digital companies and having people that are more strategic and, and strategists like Steve Hasker, the new global chief operating officer of Nielsen, who is a McKinsey strategist ascending to the top. And so we're seeing a really significant change in the kinds of skills that are required to be, um, you know, to really be successful in the future of a broader television and digital video ecosystem as it comes together.